Hey, what's up everyone, the French Monkey here and welcome to the overview of the new plugin that I created for Cinema 4D, the Mo Fractile, a little tool to create procedural fractile uh, in Cinema 4D, very easy to use and uh, yeah, it comes with a lot of stuff. Before we get into that, I wanted to give a quick shout out to Florian DKS. So he made a couple of years back a tutorial on motion designers community about this method of you know creating fractiles using the Mo extruder in Cinema 4D and uh, yeah pretty dope stuff to learn from and uh, I did a couple of renders on my own as part of my of my everyday project just to see you know what I could what I could come up with and uh, I would have this project files below if you want to see pretty much how I made these. So these were made in Redshift, just so you know. And uh, yeah. All right. So the plugin comes as a Cinema 4D library. So once you install it, you will have to go to your content browser here and you will see the MoFractile folder right there. And as you can see, I have a couple of folders inside. We have the MoFractile primitives. So this is all the primitives of Cinema 4D with uh, the plug implemented into them. We have some presets, so some animated presets. And I made these pretty much to show you, you know, what you can create with these. Uh, some reference object presets, showing you pretty much how to add object into this little plug. And of course, a lot of um, pre-made presets for you. So all of these were made with different primitives. So we have the cube, the platonic, the sphere right here, but we will get into that later. Right now, I'm just going to show you how uh, MoFractile works. And for that, I'm going to select my plane, which is, you know, the most basic primitive. And uh, yep, I'm going to open up my lines right here. And under the null MoFractile plane, you will see here two new tabs, the MoFractile and the Effectors tab. So right now, we are going to stay on the MoFractile. And as you can see here, our first parameters are the parameters of the plane, of course. So you, you can adjust that from here. The segments as well. The Fong option, which will come very handy if you want to create more organic stuff and some uh, orientation. Next, we have the fractal controls. So as you can see here, I've decided to uh, pretty much go about that with uh, by creating levels to this thing. So right now we have three levels uh, enabled. I'm just gonna go on my first one. And as you can see, the first level will pretty much uh, create a new set of polygon inside. It's like an extrude inner, but it's not a definitive form you know, you, you can still change it here, the expansion, upward, downward. And of course, you can also add more step to that. And the nice thing is that, you know, everything is uh, procedural. So you, you don't have to worry about going back, you know. So, yeah, we have here our first level. So I'm going to put this a little bit up. And now I'm going to go to my second layer, which is the, the level two. So I'm going to enable that. And as you can see, it's going to do the same thing on each new polygon we created uh, on the level one. So here it's exactly the same thing. We can add some step. We can expand that. We can scale it up. And we can go to level three. And as you can see, it becomes a uh, very uh, dense and we started just from a plane which is you know it's pretty dope so yeah i'm gonna do the same thing here just to show you and vice versa you know you can add fourth level fifth level and i've decided to go to level six even though you probably won't ever need to enable this because it's becoming very uh, dense as a mesh. So this is pretty much how more fractile works. I'm going to uh, disable level three and I'm going to show you what else is available in this plug. So I'm going to close my mesh right now and I'm going to go to my FX tab. We have this option right here 
I'm gonna enable this. And as you can see here, our effects tab will explode our mesh. And you can, you know, scale it up, scale it down. We have then our animation. So we have two kinds of uh, animation, primary and secondary. The primary will affect our level one mesh. So it all depends on the number of steps that we have right here. So I'm going to enable that and I'm just going to press play. And as you can see, it's going to automatically start doing its thing. So I'm going to select a noise that I like. We have our seed, we have our octave, we have our noise scale, our animation speed, loop period. So this is set to three by default and uh, one loop is usually 30 FPS. So if your project is set to 30 FPS, it's going to be one loop. So now we have three. Uh, some low clip and high clip. This is kind of a ramp to saturate the noise. And here is our basic uh, deformers. So we can scale this up and it's all noise driven. Scale it down. Change the position. And also add some rotation to it. So yeah, that's pretty nice doing its thing. Uh, then we have a secondary option for the animation tab. So I'm going to close my first one to work on the second one. And as you can see, the second one will affect only our level two. And I'm going to do the same thing, but I like this kind of animation. You know, I might change the scale a little bit. And I'm going to enable my first animation as well. So now we have, we have two animations going on on the two first levels and uh, of course you know right here we can see that i'm going with uh, a more organic shape so i'm going to go to my plane and i'm, I'm going to increase my phone angle and i might also add a subdivision surface and of course you know i added some deformers as well we have we have the bevel option which you know be sure to not have a high poly count in your scene, otherwise it's going to crash. We have the smoothing option, which is very useful. And it's going to smooth out everything. Iteration as well. So I'm going to leave that ah, around here. And we have our jiggle deformer, so I'm going to enable this. And as you can see now, it's going to create some nice jiggle more organic uh, animation so yeah that's nice and the nice thing with the jiggle is that you know you can create some very trippy stuff which is nice yep Tomp. yep and that's pretty much it so now right now we worked just on a plane and uh, yeah you can do stuff like that in no time can add more segments to your plane and uh, I'm gonna rotate this thing even more uh, nope you don't have that and of course you know you can add less so it's nice to work with the jiggle deformer enable you can create some nice keyframe and transitions. So I've decided to add only two uh, levels of animation and implement these controls right here. But of course, you know, you can always come to the Effector tab here. And as you can see, you have uh, the primary and the secondary um, effector. So be sure to not delete these. And the nice thing with that is that you can actually, you know, add anything that you want inside of MoFractile on the level three, four, five, six, and even on the FX tab. So I'm gonna try and do something with the FX animation. So once you break that, you know, the jiggle, jiggle works, which is nice. But I'm gonna disable that. And I'm gonna go to my shader right here. 
I'm gonna add uh, a noise and uh, I'm gonna go to my noise. I'm gonna add some animation right here. And yeah, and of course you can change more stuff in the position. So yeah. And that's pretty much how uh, more fractile works. So now let's work with something else. I'm gonna to go to my content browser and I'm gonna choose another primitive. I might go with the cube one, something that I like to work with. It's nice. And I'm gonna add an isometric camera. Right here. Yeah, looking good. And inside of my cube, we have also these parameters, segments. We can add fillet. And of course, we have our layers right here. So I'm gonna try to create something right now very quickly. Yep. And of course, you can also keyframe everything. And I might add a smoothing option first. And you can go pretty crazy with this. So yeah, that's nice. And of course you can add the animation as well. And it's always gonna look weird like that. So I'm gonna add my jiggle. That's good stuff. I'm gonna add a subdivision surface it's getting a little bit intense, so I'm, I'm going to close some stuff here, just so we can see what's happening. I could stay hours doing stuff here with that. So we are going to take a look at what's uh, available in the preset folder so i'm gonna go to my stills and as you can see here i try to uh, add a lot of stuff that you can make with it and of course you know it's very easy to change all of that i'm gonna load this one and i liked the hard surface uh, modeling of this and of course you can always go to the options and change anything you, you might want yes we have some other crazy stuff. The torus is also a nice one. And right here, as you can see, I added the, uh, the smoothing option because without it, it wasn't really looking great. That's better. And some of my preset will come a little bit uh, rotated. So, you know, don't worry about that. Just go to your uh, coordinates here and zero out the rotation and uh, yeah I'm going to show you now some of the animated presets that I have this is just to showcase some of the stuff you can make you know without keyframes so I'm gonna go to my cube right here I'm gonna press play and you know you can change also the stuff Another thing that you will find in the folder is also some uh, reference object presets. So this is to show pretty much how uh, you can use that on an object. So I'm gonna go out from my isometric camera. And as you can see here, we have two objects. So this is our original and this is the reference object. The way Mofragda works is that it's going to duplicate the object and just you know create its own instance and uh, for that reason, when you add an, an object, you will need to take your original one and just, you know, move it out of your frame. And you will see here 
in our object reference more fractile you will have an object reference option where you will be able to put your uh, your mesh the thing that helped me a lot working with other object was to use the polygon reduction so be sure to use that if your mesh is dense and that was some of the issue i had with the scar right here because the mesh was very dense and i had to to reduce its polygon count so yeah you just have that in mind and here on this one i think i added a couple of keyframes on the stiffness of the smoothing just to be able to to have a nice looping animation so yeah and as i told you earlier you can also add your own shader to it so as you can see here i added uh, a shader here with uh, an inverted fall off and I added this effector onto the first level and that's pretty nice and yeah that's about it about more fractile I added uh, some showcases use that I've been making here so this these were rendered with a redshift and the texture is simply a mixed texture with a curvative uh, node. It's like the dirt node of Octane. So, you know, very easy setups. I've been using my, my Grunge kit as well on the texture. And yeah, it's been very fun to work with it, come up with new uh, fractiles. I will have all of these links down in the descriptions and uh, let me know what you think about it and I will see you guys in the next video. Cheers!